That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Balloon, a new-ish German film directed by Michael Herbig. Uh, it will be opening at the Quad Cinema in New York, February 21st, with a rollout March 13th at the Lemley Theatres in Los Angeles, uh, followed by a later uh, rollout courtesy of Distrip Films in the U.S. It's directed by... Michael Herbig. What else has he done? Uh, he's a director I'm not familiar with. He's done an actor and director. Uh, he's directed a, quite a few German comedies. To, usually German comedies don't uh, travel to the U.S. Uh, they have, yeah. Uh, so I think this is the first film I've seen of his. I'm not familiar with any of his previous work. He did star uh, Wolfgang Peterson, uh, who did in the 90s and early 2000s, did a lot of big Hollywood films, went back to Germany a couple of years ago and did a comedy. Uh, my, Mr. Herbig was in that. Um, Balloon is based on a true story mm -hmm. about... The early 80s, about two families that use a hot air balloon to defect from East Germany to... or East Berlin to West Berlin. Yes. Yes. Um, and it previously, previously, this story in particular was made into a film in 1982, uh, starring... <laughs> John Hurt and Bo Bridges. As non Germans? Not, yeah. Well, imagine that. But directed by Delbert Mann, who is a very notable Hollywood studio director. He did Marty, the Ernest Borgnine classic, uh, which is an amazing film. This was his second to last theatrical feature before he, that Mr. Mann uh, went on to television. And you know, he did, really, he did a television film with Natalie Cole and Marla Gibbs uh, in 1994 that, looking him up, I, I, I feel like I need to see that. Oh, called, yeah, I watched watch that. Lily in Winter. Oh, anyway, interesting. Mr. Man. So I, I haven't seen Night Passage. I would be interested in it. So tell uh, more about what Balloon, like the plot. Uh, it, it's about an electrician uh, and his wife and two children who have been uh, painstakingly plotting to... They've built a, a, a hot air balloon and they're waiting for a north wind, which apparently is very rare, to carry them over into uh, safety. And they make an attempt. They make it. It starts out with an attempt. So within the first half of the half hour of the film, you have a failed attempt. Um, Not and, even. It's like the first twenty minutes. Yeah, and so like, the pacing is very quick. They land like within a couple hundred meters of the border uh, because the they go through some clouds and the material their balloon is made out of soaks up the water and it basically lands them. Um, so the next hour of the film is that is. Uh, they have to scramble back to their car, unseen, uh, which is 10 kilometers away. Uh, but then, of course, the remains of their balloon are found. And then they have to, uh, the authorities, um, played by always a German nasty, Thomas Kreschmann, uh, is investigating who did this because it was illegal uh, for uh, East Germans to leave at that time. So they're trying to find... It's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. We know the family didn't like the version of the film from the 80s. Which is... So, we know, so, so it's not really spoiling the plot. I mean, we know that they were successful in um, escaping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they make a second attempt. They are successful. Uh, the end. So this film, uh, there are a lot of things that work really well for Oh, me. yeah. It's a, it, it's a little long for what it is, but it's pretty... Well, let's talk about what works. It, for the most part, it's very efficient um, filmmaking. It, it's it's very got a mainstream uh, element about it. But there are film there are scenes where I was I felt very tense and I kept checking the time. Like when is this going to be over? Because you know you're watching these people that have a lot of stake. It's running thrilling. Yes. People, people. So the pacing I think is strong. Yes. Yeah. Because you know that first attempt happens pretty quickly. So mm -hmm. the next hour is the investigator really trying to pinpoint who is the family that tried to escape. Uh, and there are a lot of tense moments. I really liked the lead guy. Uh, He's very handsome. Friedrich Mucky. Yeah. Um, oh, and his wife was very pretty too. She's beautiful. Carolyn Schuck. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, David Cross plays Gunther, the one that sews everything together. He has been in a few notable American films, uh, The Reader with Kate Winslet and Spielberg's War Horse, of course. Yeah. The subject matter is uh, easy to, it's easy to create tension with the subject matter. Sure, like Nazi Germany as well. Yes, mm -hmm. right. So what didn't work for me is there are a lot of extra little uh, cliches. sprinkles, of, you know, cliched moments where it's like, everyone's watching, everyone's watching. Oh, the phone's ringing. Who could that be? Oh, it's just room service. You know, there's so... Or they, or they in one key moment, 
right before the finale, they juxtapose uh, the uh, authorities are tracking down all these pharmacy, this pharmacist because they've they, honed in on they, who they they've think. honed in, and then while the main couple are like hugging in their home, you you know you the see doorbell footsteps, rings. footsteps going to a doorbell, and the doorbell rings, and they. Yeah. But it's their son, it's yeah. not the authority. Yeah. There yeah. are several moments like that that felt like jumps, the equivalent of a jump scare. Yeah, that are scare, unnecessary. Yeah. That seemed really unnecessary. Um, they, so that kind of, I, I think it cheapened an otherwise very well done mm -hmm. movie with excellent pacing. Uh, the teenage son, played by... I didn't write his name. Oh, well... The, a picture of him will flash up. Sure. He uh, is sort of in love with the neighbor girl. Uh, whose who's father is a Stasi commander. Yeah, he works for the government in some capacity. Well, the, the Stasi, which is the GDR. Uh, I didn't think he worked for them. I thought he worked for like no, the... No, he did. He oh, said he did? That, yeah. Oh. So Stasi was the secret police, the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. Okay. Dangerous so he's, he's taken a fancy to the neighbor's daughter. Um, and... On several occasions, we think that he might sort of like spill the beans and jeopardize their mission. So his little relationship with her to me seemed unnecessary. Yeah. And added length to the overall uh, timing of the film. You could have cut that out. Could have cut yeah. that out. Could have cut out. Could have cut out a couple of things that would have made the film, uh, I think, a little more tight. Um, because it does feel a little long, especially because we know going in that they are going to successfully cross in this balloon. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, yeah, I really liked it. I don't know what else to say. Um, for I, I, it brought to mind uh, a film that I really like about a doctor that's trying to defect from the East, uh, starring Nina Haas, is Christian Petzold's Barbara from 2012, which, you know, is not based on a true story, so there's a little more uh, evident tension in that. But, uh, you know, that it does make... And even uh, Atomic Blonde has some elements of that with Charlize Theron, because mm -hmm. that's uh, set in early 80s Berlin as well. Oh, I did want to say, the first, you know, the first balloon attempt, we see them in the balloon for, like, three minutes, four minutes. That three, four minute sequence was way more enthralling and engaging than all of Aeronauts. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree. If we're talking about air balloon, yes. The, and these characters seemed a lot more, like, f I, like uh, f it, I, I find it humorous that these characters seem to explain, in this film, do a better job of explaining how the hot air balloon works. And why and their actual doing, yeah. trip and why they're doing what they're doing. Better than that damn film, The Aeronauts, that's supposed to be entirely about that. About uh, people that designed and implemented yeah. the technology that we know. Yeah. And obviously, in Balloon, the stakes are exponentially higher for the people traveling in this balloon but I just think it's a testament to the writing um, the direction and the performances too. and the acting yeah. yeah yeah I would give this film three and a half out of five stars oh I was there's just one too many cliches for me but uh, three out of five is what I give it okay okay bye bye